do that. Okay, so I have a secret weapon I've been waiting to show you guys for this build. This will be my first time to try this weapon out on a big project. Wanna? Okay, so that's right. I have a magnetic drill press. And I have annular cutters for this. And a ginormous three-quarter inch chuck adapter. So there's no more using the big drill with the ratchet strap and that thing swinging around and hit me in the face. And no more trying to hold these long bars up underneath the drill press at just the right height. Now I can just set this thing, clamp it down, and let it do all the work. This thing is a beast. This is gonna be excellent for handling this giant hole saw at two and three eighths inches. I've had a lot of problems with this thing, keeping it square in the past, trying to do it by hand. So you definitely need a press for it. So we'll be able to use this thing on the center holes to put our bearing bushings in. One of the disadvantages to having the magnetic drill press is the throw isn't very long. So when you start stacking up an adapter and the length of this, it may not fit, but we can stack up other pieces of metal to clamp down and then set this up on different heights to get it to work, no problem. These annular bits are really awesome because you can drill like three to 400 holes continuously without ever sharpening the bit. I'm only using a hole saw this time because I already had this hole saw from doing other projects. So now I'm going to measure and dimple all the halfway points on our X beams. Oh yeah, that bad boy did good. Man, that was easy work. That used to would have been a long battle for sure. We got a good tight fit on our pipe. Couldn't be happier. I'm finding out really quick with all the power this thing has that you gotta really get into this quick to keep it from wanting to walk. So, uh, it's kind of a learning process for me, but uh, it's definitely doing the job. I was having to do some grinding on these holes because even though I used a center for my hole saw, it's kind of a used one, so I think it has some oval to it. So it could have been cutting a little straighter. It had a little walk to it, so I probably should have bought a fresh new hole saw for this project, but hey, it's gonna work. I remeasured and centered the hole, that way my alignment will be good. Then I was able to fill the gap with weld, so I think we're gonna be good on this. I don't claim to be the world's best welder, but uh, 
I got good heat in it, got good puddling, got good contact area. One of the things I'm not very good at is thinking about the setup. So having my arm where it can rest and come around, um, you know, so I'll end up having to have hard stops and hard starts because I'm not thinking very well about all the setups. Uh, when you only weld every couple of months, you kind of forget and got to get back into practice. So it's not beautiful, but it's a good weld. It's going to be strong. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do I got stinky welds or good enough for a non-professional? I don't get paid for my welds, so I'm not professional. That's the definition. Okay, so now we're gonna switch to our annular cutters. I have previously been using a 21 30 seconds for 5 8 hitch pins. Now for this project, I'm gonna use a one inch for my one inch bolts. Now if you'll notice, these have a spring-loaded center pin that act like a check valve that holds back the cutting fluid until you're ready to cut. So once you start to put pressure on it, it'll open up and let fluid pass through. Okay, right, so let's just uh, mount this little oil can up and uh, there's just this one little screw back here to be able to put it in. I think there's supposed to be two holes. Since I can only find the one, uh, that's one I'm gonna go with. I mean, I guess that'll work because it's gonna hold that tight, I guess. I don't know. Uh, see how this little hose hooks up. We'll just put this tube here, lock it in place. Hey, I mean, I don't want to waste expensive cutting fluid, so we'll just put some regular oil in this and see how that works. Some good old cheap stuff. See if this makes a disastrous mess. I only filled it up about that high. Okay, let's uh, open the little valve here. All right, let's plug this in. Turn on our magnet. Pretty strong, lifts up the bar with it. Okay, let's see if we open that up if our fluid comes down. There it goes. All right, so there's our uh, fluid that should close the valve off. We should be ready to do this first take. Now we're preparing to do our one inch holes for a one inch bolt and so we can put our new caster wheels in the ends of these pipes. I've just measured our bearing and obviously it's a two inch bearing so we'll just do a one inch by one inch center and then we'll be able to have our overlap here where this is riding on the pipe. We're going to do that on both ends in eight places. On this end, the bearing will be on this side. On that end, the bearing will be on that side. So let's see how fast we can go through this time. Real time. Look at all that beautiful stuff. Awesome. I don't know about you, but all this is a lot better to deal with than a bunch of little bitty gritty shavings after your bit gets dull. These things are sharp. So you have to pick this donut out of there to release your spring again. But uh, that tab is all that's left. Okay, let's uh, see how ready this is without any grinding for a one inch bolt to go in.
That's a something of beauty right there. Nice lineup. Let's see how good the magnetic drill press did without doing a pilot hole and only a center punch. That did amazing. If you don't know how hard it is sometimes to line these up, those big drill bits can walk on you real bad. So the fact that I haven't even cleaned these holes up and this one inch bolt went in a one inch hole like that on 16 holes, that's phenomenal. That saved us a ton of time grinding and cleaning up these holes. And if you'll notice, there's like no burrs. There's a slight ring that it leaves on the inside, but you can just quickly shave that off with a couple of files and you're done. So uh, the maintenance on these holes is way less. And these holes are gonna be a lot stronger because they have that nice square edge all the way through without any kind of crack lines. Okay, that was the 16th hole. And one thing about drilling is, you know, if you still have big chunks of shavings, that is still sharp. And we have curly cues that are three feet long over here. After 16 holes, still just as sharp as a brand new bit. Some challenges I noticed was you have to make sure when you have this oil bottle on that when you're done drilling, immediately you need to pop that drill tab out. Otherwise, the oil will continue to build up under there and leak. Another conflict of interest between my usual practices of a regular drill press is anytime I have a rotational device uh, like this, I usually wouldn't want to wear gloves. But this stuff is very sharp and it gets stuck in everything. So unless you want to get your knuckles shaved, uh, you almost have to wear a type of glove for using this. Now, the difference between this and a regular drill press is because you're stamping it to your part, um, you're not having to hold the part in place as you're drilling. Whereas usually a drill press, you'd be holding your hands here and holding your part still. That's one advantage to be able to keep your procedure down, be careful, get this thing started, keep your hands clear, use your lever up here, and you shouldn't be down here by the rotational device for your gloves to get caught. You might be asking yourself, is this thing a keeper? I don't have any experience with a high dollar name brand magnetic drill press, so I can't really compare it to that. I do know that this is about a quarter of the price. This was in the $250 range, and this thing's a big heavy magnet, a uh, big heavy motor. It's definitely very solid. There's no wiggle, there's no lag. Everything tightens down. It's very heavy duty and there's a lot of torque on this motor. So, so far, this is gonna fit my needs awesome. I'm very sick of using twist drill bits and uh, having to use a hand drill to do awkward drills on long pieces of metal. Now, as far as comparing it to a standard drill press that I was using before, it's a thousand times better for long, big, bulky pieces of metal. I would always find myself trying to take a long piece of metal like this, be able to drill on this end of it, I'd have to stack blocks to get the very magic number of block heights to make this level to drill this square. I'd be searching around the shop for blocks, just the right size, shimming it with an extra piece of metal, trying to get this thing square on this end. Compared to this contraption, I can just stick this magnetic drill press to this long sheet of metal and it's gonna come out perfectly perpendicular every time. And this magnet will hold it up sideways, it'll hold it upside down. Clearly upside down isn't a good idea with the oil tank on. Duh.
By my estimates, this tool is a total keeper. To be able to keep these bars up here and not have to lift them up and down and go and stack blocks is a definite time saver. I'm not wore out. I was able to let the mechanics of the machine do its job. I mean, it did do a really big, it did make a real big mess, but hey, that just means it's doing work. Drilling 16 holes through this gauge of metal might have taken me about three to four hours in the past. But even with filming this, it took me about 30 minutes to do 16 holes, flipping and reclamping all this and messing with the oil. And I'm not even that proficient at using it yet. So I approve this. It's a great value for a home fabricator. And unless this motor just all of a sudden goes out on me, I'm really happy. Keep on commenting me in the future and I'll let you know if this motor did go out. That's gonna be all for this build. We got our main holes drilled and welded, our bearing holes drilled, and uh, we got some more cutting onto this to do next time. But for now, that's a wrap. We'll see you on the next video.